And there was no hating. He didn't even hate his enemies. One of the things that he said, which is so difficult for us to follow, is that he didn't hate his enemies. He said, pray for your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Difficult things to do. When I was at the Holocaust Museum in Washington um, a few months ago, I read a prayer written by a prisoner, a prayer for the guards, a prayer for the people who sent others into the concentration camp ovens. And this was a prayer that God would somehow be able to forgive these people for their ignorance and for their bringing pain and for their hatred. This is an amazing prayer. And I think many of us who would read that prayer would say, how could anyone even pray that after the atrocities and the misery? But someone was able to do that. And so much of our hating, let's, let's admit it, so much of our hating is really about security, about being safe, about taking care of ourself alone. But Jesus is about truth and love. And Jesus is not about security. There's absolutely nothing in those lessons that Jesus says to us that says, above all, seek security. He said, only live with God. Helen Keller wrote one time, and I've quoted this often and usually made people a little bit mad about it. Helen Keller's, Keller said, security is a myth. Now, how much time do we spend should, securing our security, making sure we've got enough and put away and uh, no emergencies could arise that we couldn't take care of? <clears throat> the shooter, the white supremacist at the Holocaust Museum, <clears throat> who shot the security guard. Uh, such a painful and awful story, given what that museum is all about. If you haven't been there, I, I urge you to go and see it. For the shooter, the myth of security made enemies of anyone who was not his kind of person, who was not a white supremacist like he was. And if there were any differences, those were the people he hated. The Nazis made this myth a worldwide epidemic, and millions and millions died. 200 million casualties in World War II, 50 million, over 50 million deaths. Looking for security, not for truth. To be fully human is to seek truth in life no matter what happens. No one has all of it. We all just have part of it, but we continue to seek. And no organized religion is so pure that it has not sought security sometimes more than it sought God. The Christian church has a long history of seeking security sometimes more than God. The, answer, the question, however, comes, and our answer is crucial, can we live this life like Jesus? Can we live it with zest? Can we celebrate humanity? Or do we have another agenda? <clears throat> Especially with parenting, one thing that comes up on the agenda is control, you know. Right now, Maggie has complete control of Nyla. She's holding her. This, this little baby is dependent upon her for everything. And do you remember, those of you who raised children, when that changed? And you thought, now I have no control. It's absolutely out the window. But even when our children teach us this, we forget it. And we think there are things in life we can absolutely control. And we're going to hold on to those things as tightly as we can. Kids, they know they have not much control. They look at us grown-ups. They look up to us grown-ups. And you, if you ever want to talk to a child, uh, a small child, and you want to get some immediate rapport, just sit down on the floor. There's an immediate difference. Those of you who can get up, please sit down on the floor. If you're going to have trouble getting up, make sure you have a friend with you or something like that. But <clears throat> I can remember in churches when, I, when we had a lot of little kids and they would come running over. If I would kneel down on the floor and get down as low as they were, sometimes I got some tremendous hugs. Kids that didn't even know me would run over and hug me. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So that's a control issue that kids understand they don't have much control in life. And so they're just going to live it. 
And they also know what they can and they can't control. This is one reason why siblings pick on the younger ones. You see a little kid, you know, you could give them a little shove, they fall over. So your older sister picks on you. Um, I was the oldest, but my middle sister used to pick on me because she knew that my mother uh, wouldn't allow me to punish her. But kids teach us that. There's certain things you can control and certain things you can't. In our grown-up years, fear becomes a very difficult thing for us to deal with because we live in a radically insecure world. You think about 9-11. All those people went to work. All those people had an agenda. All those people went up in those elevators in their building and they thought it was a regular day. And then they were gone, more than 2,000 of them. And it scares us so much because it makes us realize, yes, we are in a radically insecure world. We don't know what's going to happen and we are not any way able to make our life absolutely secure. And so we withdraw. And sometimes we revert to old known ways to see the world, ways that really don't have any impact or any relativity anymore. But they're ways that we know, and so we feel secure when we hold on to stuff we know, even though the world is changing. But children don't have so much fear because what they look for, first of all, is love and comforting and affirmation. And when you give them that, they're happy. We look at the old ways sometimes to give us security. Children always want to see the new things, don't they? What's new? What's possible? And they are amazed by these new things. Many theologians have said, when God ceases to be a surprising God, we have lost God completely. This truth seeking, however, is tough. It is hard work. It requires courage and love and huge amounts of forgiveness. Three things we all want to teach children, to have courage, to seek the truth, and to be forgiving. Three very important things. So Jesus said, I came that you may have life. You, you human ones, with all your problems and pains, with your anger and your misunderstandings, with your false pride, your worry about money, your political posturing, and the vast knowledge of really trivial things sometimes. You, who sometimes think you're above others, sometimes think you're not equal to others, you, you are the human ones, and I came that you may have life. I love you, so live your life abundantly. Amen. Would you rise now, please, and receive the benediction? Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And what you have learned and received and heard, now do. And the God of peace be with us always. Amen. <laughs>